the church to fight the good fight of faith. Turn your Bibles to 1 Timothy 6. I'll just be reading one verse. And if you don't mind, just stand with me. One verse, I promise. You know, I came this morning, I said to pastor, boy, the head hurt. I feel feverish, but the devil is a liar. First, Pete, First Timothy 6, verse 12, it says, here begins the reading of the word of God. It says, fight. Come on, let's read it together. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word today. Give us the ear to hear, the mind to understand, and the heart to receive. Anoint us today, God. Destroy yokes today, God. Lift every burden today, God. As your healing process has already begun, we receive it today, God, in the name of Jesus. You may be seated. Praise God. Praise God. <clears throat> The Phillips version, that's the New Testament modern English, says, fight the worthwhile battle of the faith. Keep your grip on that life eternal to which you have been called and to which you boldly profess your loyalty before many witnesses. How many of you can remember when you got baptized? And there were a crowd of witnesses that stood to witness your baptism. And you made that vow. You remember that vow? Witness now ye men and angels. Before God I stand. To him I make a vow, a solemn vow I dare not make or break. Thy vows are upon me, O God, until death. How many of us can remember that? Until death. Today I want to encourage you to live the life that we've confessed to live. Paul spoke of spiritual warfare to every Christian who desires to live holy who desires to live a life of righteousness, a life of holiness. A true Christian is called to be a soldier. And we must behave as such. From the day of his or her conversion to the day of his or her death. You say, Nadine, am, am I called to be a soldier? Yes you are. Second Timothy 2 verse 4 says, no man engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who has enlisted him as a soldier. And when, when you are enlisted, God does not give you a pacifier. God does not give you a nipper bottle, nor does he give you a bib. He gives you his Holy Spirit. Oh, glory be to God. When you're enlisted as a soldier, he gives you his Holy Spirit, who is above every spirit. He gives you his Holy Spirit, who has all authority and all power. Oh, glory be to God, to keep you in the battlefield so when you and I are enlisted as a soldier don't look for a pacifier or a bib he gives us his holy spirit and he gives us the sword which is the word of God because you and I are enlisted as a soldier. And we are engaged in warfare. 
So I want to remind the church today that there are unseen forces right now working against the plan of God for your life. And sometimes we tend to forget this. Let me inform you that they are well thought out strategies and schemes that are working through various means such as the entertainment world, social media, it's working through books and TV programs, it's working through games and people to thwart the will of God and knock you off course. Young people in here today, and as a matter of fact, all of us here today, the enemy wants to destroy you. He wants to wipe you out and damn your soul to hell. He even right now, he's working to implant distracting thoughts in your mind so you do not even hear the word of God. Listen, in the Garden of Eden, God gave man a command. He said, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it. For in the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. A command from God is a direct instruction. It's an order to be carried out to its fullest. And what Satan did, he, he turned God's command into a question. And he approached Eve and he said, Indeed, did God say you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? A question is a matter requiring discussion. I want to tell the church today that God's commands does not require discussion. Hallelujah. Can I say that again, sister? God commands does not require a discussion. What the enemy did, he planted a thought. He suggested a thought in her mind to distract and deceive Eve. And what Eve did, she played around with the thought in her mind. Her idea, and, the, and, and now it became her idea. The Bible did not say she went to her husband and said, oh, the serpent told me this. No, she went to him and she presented the fruit to eat. And today the enemy, the father of lies, he's doing the same thing, planting suggestions. We encounter this every day. People are asking questions. Did God say you must not smoke? Did God say you must not go to clubs? Did God say you cannot wear this, you cannot wear that? Did God say we can't have boyfriend? All these questions they are asking today. But let me remind you of God's command. All glory be to God. What God says, he means. And what he means, he says. And what the Bible encourages the believer today is to walk in the spirit. Oh, glory be to God. Come on, church. You know the Bible. Walk in the spirit so you do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Because the Bible says the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. When you go down in Galatians 5, Paul says, now the works of the flesh are evident. They are obvious. They are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, idolatry sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousies. Have I gotten to you yet? Outburst of wrath, selfish ambitions dissension, heresies, envy, murderers, drunkenness, revelries, and he says, and the like. Anything that look like this is against God. 
and such like, and things that are similar, and things that look like contention. He said, which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God, of heaven. Paul was saying these are the behavior of those who are or the behavior and the lifestyle that we had before we came to Jesus Christ. And Paul was saying that we shouldn't be living like this anymore. I'm getting somewhere. Just bear with me. He says these are the behaviors of those who are not carriers of the Holy Spirit. No one in Christ Jesus should be exhibiting these behaviors. We shouldn't be practicing these behaviors. Oh, glory be to God. We have to take God's word as truth. He says if we practice these behaviors, we will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. And so Satan knows this and he distracts and he plants thoughts in your minds and you know sometimes you meditate on them until they become your thoughts because he knows if you hear the word and you receive the word your faith will grow your faith will be lifted your faith will grow the enemy doesn't want your faith to grow he knows that the word of God will convert your soul. He knows that if you hear the word and do the word, you and I will become wise. He knows that when we hear the word of God, we will rejoice in our hearts. Oh God, can you remember the three Hebrew boys? The Bible said, that they said to the king, because they were about to be thrown in the fire, remember? And I believe they knew God's word. And they had his word. And they said, oh king, we know that our God is able. We've got to believe God. Oh, hallelujah. Help me, Jesus. You and I got to believe God. Who are we going to believe? Are you going to believe the government? Are you going to believe a man or a woman over God? We've got to believe God. And as I stand here today, I can declare that I believe God. Oh, glory be to God. And so the Hebrew boys, they said to King Nebu, they said, listen, we know our God. Do you know your God? We know our God is able to deliver, and he will deliver. But King Nebu, listen, just listen. Even if God decides, how many of us can say that? Even if God decides not to. Oh God, say ouch. You've got to know where you're going. You've got to know who God is. And that's why we've got to fight this fight of faith. They said, even if he doesn't deliver, we will still not serve you. <laughs> we still not go bow. <laughs> we still not go bow to you. Because our God is greater. Our God is the creator of heaven of earth of man of woman our God was before the beginning of time so even if God decides and his decision is right I want to say that to someone here today God's decision is right even if God decides we still will not the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. The enemy knows that when you and I obey God's word, 
there is a reward. He knows that God requires obedience. I heard my sister said it this morning. He requires obedience than sacrifice. So young people, my brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, I want you, I encourage us to fight. Turn to your neighbor and say, fight. 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 Oh God, oh God. You've got to believe that you're in a fight. Fight the desire to allow anything, whether it's internal or external, to distract you. Fight the urge to begin. You know, sometimes you're in church and you see people scrolling through their phones and whatever the word is going on or saying, they don't receive it because they are distracted. And sometimes we're looking out for the big things. But I can tell you the enemy used the small things. It's the small foxes that destroys the vine. So you've got to fight. We're looking out for the big things. And he said, oh, oh, you didn't call someone, so check. And that word just goes over your head. You didn't receive it. A word that can save your soul. A word that can turn situation around. Fight the urge to begin to scroll through your phone. Leave it at home. If you know you're going to come in and scroll. Scroll through social media during service, during prior time. Ah, mighty God, fight the urge to allow your mind to wonder what I'm going to cook, what I'm going to wear to church, what I'm going to wear to work. Fight it! These are the little things. We look over them. And the word is going and you miss it. Mighty God. You come empty and you leave empty because you've been scrolling. You cause your mind to wander. Ah, try, fight the urge not to talk in the presence of God unless you have to. Oh God, I, I notice that the enemy uses these little tricks and schemes. To get us off track. And when church finished, you say, how was the message? It was good, but that's all you got. It was good. What was the word? It's the word that's going to save your soul. It's the word that's going to quench your thirst. It's the word that's going to keep you from now till eternity. An enemy knows that. It's the word. Oh, Shekera Maisa. And so the enemy wants you and I to become captivated by the things of the world so that we lose our appetite for the things of God. Jesus warned Peter or his disciples in Luke 22. You remember that story when Jesus said to Simon, he said, Simon, Simon, Satan indeed has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. In other words, he wants to separate you from me. That's what they do with wheat. They separate the wheat from the chaff. And Jesus said to Simon, he wants to separate you from me. Oh, hallelujah. But Jesus, you know what Jesus said? He said, but Simon, I have prayed for you. Now, he didn't stop there. He said, I have prayed that your faith fail not. I said, God, should we start praying that our brothers and sisters' faith while they are going through the hardship, while they are going through their circumstances, yes, we want God to deliver, but we must pray that their faith fail not. Ah, oh, when you don't have no faith, you're done. Mighty God, I want to encourage the church today to pray for your brothers and sisters. If it's, that's the only prayer you know this week, 
I pray that her faith fail not. I pray that his faith fail not. I pray that Pastor Eugene's faith fail not. Jesus said, I have prayed. Don't wait till they're in the situation. Pray before. Because as a soldier, we will be in battle. Something is coming up. Don't wait till it comes. Then we start praying. Pray before. Amen. Jesus said, I have prayed in the past. Amen. Oh, glory. That your faith fail not. We are living in what the Bible calls an untoward generation. That's in Acts 2. Verse 40, all around us, there's wickedness and perversion. We live in a generation where right is called wrong. Wrong is being right. We as a people of God, we need to educate ourselves. Educate ourselves so that we can help our children. The next generation that is coming up. The world talks about sex trafficking as if it's nothing. Gender fluidity, non-binary, the occult, witchcraft, they're no longer hiding. And every day we've got to fight this good fight of faith. So we've got to educate ourselves so that we can pass knowledge onto our children. So that they can know what God says in his word. Because the world has become perverse and wicked. We must make our young people aware of the schemes and strategies of the enemy. Because we've got the experience, right? They're coming up. So we've got to teach them, mighty God. We are living in a world right now where the generation is confused. But God says, I am not the author of confusion, but of peace. We're living in a world right now where sin is on full display. The world has adapted the mindset that all are free to do whatever they want. Oh God. Paul knew what he was talking about when he told Timothy to fight this good fight of faith. And so we cannot just sit down. We've got to fight. Fight with our prayer. Fight with our worship. Fight with the word. Fight with the tongues. We've got to fight. Mighty God, they have adopted a mindset that says we can do whatever we want. Did you know that is the model for satanism? That's, that's his theme. Do as thou wilt. This is the word of the occultist A. Crawley. Do as thou wilt. The enemy ain't playing with us. He ain't playing with the church. And so whenever they say, I'm going to do as I want, what they are saying is that they can go around God, intended purpose and will, and get the same results. That's what they're saying. Ah, help me, Holy Spirit here. Saying that you can do what you want and get the same results. That's what they are saying. But the devil is a liar. When you say that you are, you are saying man can be with man and get the same result. Oh, we've got to fight church. It's not just fighting in the church. We got to fight in the world and fight on our knees. When, we're, when we say that we're saying that a woman can be with a woman and get the same result that God intended. That's what the world is saying. When, we're, when you say that you're saying you can enter through the broad gate and get to heaven. 
<laughs> oh God, but the devil is a liar. We've got to teach our young people because social media is teaching them. The schools are teaching them. The adverts on the bus is teaching them. And so you and I cannot afford to sit. And even if you don't have any young person in your life, there's a lot of young people in the church. You and I got to be concerned about their souls, concerned about their lives, concerned about God's word. We are called to be soldiers. That means you watch over each other. And Jesus said in his word, when the world says, do as thou wilt. Jesus said in Luke 9, 23, if any man comes after me, let him deny himself. You see the opposition? The word said, do what you want. Jesus said, you cannot do what you want. If you come after me, you've got to deny yourself. Take up your cross. Not just Christmas, Easter, Good Friday, every day. And follow me. If you and I are going to follow Jesus, if we're going to live for Jesus, you've got to deny yourself. You've got to deny your will, your way, your flesh. Let me tell you something. I'm being honest. The way I felt this morning, I said, oh, I can't, I can't do this, but I can't disappoint. I am weak, shivering, but I denied the flesh. Because the enemy said, you can't preach. You can't stand up. Your voice is going, but I denied the flesh. I sat there, and pastor, you read my scripture. I sat there and read Psalms 121. My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow my foot to be moved. He who keeps Israel, him not sleep, him not doors off. He's watching me. He's threatening me. My help. Right there. And when I heard Pastor Reddy, I said, God, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. Deny the flesh. My God. If you're going to follow Jesus. Now, it's easy to deny people. It's easy to deny the things or things. But when it comes to self. I realize, my sister, that it's hard. It's a struggle. Because self-see, self-want. Self-feel, self-want. Self-hear, self-want. Self-feel hurt, self-wants to retaliate. So it's a struggle. But Jesus has given us his Holy Spirit who lives on the inside so you and I can draw strength it's not in our own strength oh glory be to God we've got to know this so when you're fighting it's not in your own strength we are no match for the enemy on our own you and I are no match for the flesh on our own Oh, glory be to God. We've got to fight. You've got to fight. You've got to fight the good fight of faith. And when you fight, watch God anoint you. Some people say, oh, yes, yeah, so God anoint me. The anointing destroys yokes. Oh, God. Want the anointing of God on your life. It doesn't just break the yoke, pastor. Because when you break something, you can put it back together. The Bible says the anointing destroys the yoke. And God gets 
the glory. Oh, hallelujah. Watch God anoint you when you fight. Do you know about the life of Paul? Oh, he fought. He fought people, storm, shipwreck, mouth, this, snake, that. He fought a good fight. And he was anointed for the task. Oh, when you're anointing, the enemy cannot take you out before time. Lord of mercy, Holy Spirit, when you're anointing, the enemy cannot take you out before time. Because the anointing is upon your life. Oh, hallelujah. When you fight the good fight, watch God bring your family together. Oh, we are struggling with family issues. Leave it to God. <laughs> Lord of mercy, take your mouth out of it. Leave it to God. I hear the word says, be still. Oh, Shabase koromu shabai. Be still and know that I am God. You don't need to fight this battle. Just be still and watch God bring that wayward child or husband or wife or mother or father. Just you, you live for God and fight. You be that role model in your house, in your workplace and watch God tear down the enemy. Oh God, I know what I'm talking about. I've got my testimonies. Your flesh cannot be trusted. Your flesh will let you down. So the enemy has an agenda to normalize things that are detrimental to the child of God. You realize that things are being normalized now? normalizes sexualization of young people. The enemy puts it on clothing lines, put it in books, in cartoons. Witchcraft has been normalized. They say it's good witch and bad witch, vampire witch and vampire baton. All these things has been normalized. Open our eyes. The world normalizes these things. We've got to be aware of it. It's not a dream. If I had asked my grandmother if she would live, if she would believe that these things would go on today, she would say, no, Jesus will come already. But it's going on now, right before our very eyes. As a church, we are on or there is a universal, unified attack against the church and the church fighting amongst themselves. The enemy is unified and we are fighting. A house divided cannot stand. And if we're fighting, we all have to go the same way. Up the you fight against the current that's coming this way. We should all be going this way. A divided house cannot stand. Regardless of how you feel, regardless of what the enemy says or what you think or what you understand, Paul says, fight the good fight of faith. Oh, glory be to God. I'm coming to a close. Glory be to God. Paul says, continue thou in the things which you have learned. I came and I heard Sunday school. And we've heard the words over and over and over again. Paul says, continue in the things that you have learned. Glory be to God. And Jesus said in John 8, 31, he said, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples. Indeed, indeed, 
You are my disciples. Brothers and sisters, the end result is for us to look like Jesus. Do you agree? The end result is for us to look like Jesus. Don't let sin or the flesh or the world rule the spirit of God. On Saturday, as I, I go over the notes, the Lord reminded me of a king. In 2 Chronicles 15, his name is Asa. King Asa. And in 2 Chronicles 15, I just want to say to someone today, as God, rem God brought it to me and I began to do my research, you are fighting this fight. You are fighting the good fight of faith. But the things that are coming against you, the situations that you are faced with has left you feeling discouraged. A broken relationship, a challenging job or no job, an unattainable goal, external threats, internal conflicts, health challenges, Resistance from your own family. Oh, God. I know when, you, when we, some of us, you know, we start saying Jesus, we get so, the, the, the family turn their back. They don't want to talk to you. They want to have nothing to do with you. They said every time you open your mouth, it's Jesus. Lord of mercy. But the Bible tells me that he's the bread. He's the truth. He's the way. He's the life. So every time I open my mouth, it's Jesus. Oh, glory be to God. Resistance from your own family. And if you know King Asa, he, he felt these things. Personal doubts, limited resources. But in 2 Chronicles 15, God sent a word. He said, hear me, Asa. You can read it when you go home. And all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you. Amen. So King Asa, he had a daunting task of eradicating idol worship in his time. He had to pull down all the idol worship and the bales. He had to set things in order. And in your family and in your community and around you, you've got to set things in order and it's going to be hard but a good soldier will fight Amen. and I come to encourage you today because you're fighting the Lord says I am with you Amen. oh when I read that on Saturday tears flow from my face he says I am with you but then God went on to say, I will be with you while you are with me. He said, if you seek me, you will find me. Stop looking at the bottle. Stop looking to man and woman. They can't help. Look to God. Oh, glory be to God. People say they don't believe in Jesus. But here God is telling Asa, the task that is before you is hard. But I am with you. And if God be for you, who can? Oh, glory be to God. Who can be against you? Let them talk and keep them talking. You just do for God. And he said, but Asa, if you forsake me, I will forsake you. Today, God is saying in 2 Chronicles 15 verse 7, be strong. Be strong. 
You are fighting, be strong. You haven't started the fight yet, start it now and be strong. God says, be strong and let your hands not become weak. Don't give up on your testimony. Don't give up on the word of God. Don't give up on the word for God. God says, listen, if you don't give up, my brothers and sisters, I'm not there yet, but I've been through enough to know that Jesus is enough for me. He said, if you don't give up, you shall receive your reward. It's not time now to throw in the towel. You've got to fight. It's a battle. And I'm, not, I'm sure you've heard this already. You're not on the playground. You're not in the gym. You're on a battlefield. You're not in the supermarket. You're on a battlefield. A battlefield is where missiles are thrown. Oh, Shabbat Shalom. I remember when my mother had stroke twice. I was here, unemployed. I said, God, if you take her life, who may God, Jamaica? Shaba se koromoshi. And when my sister and everybody called with the confusion, I said, I will pray. My favorite saying now is, and my daughter is a witness, is I know how to pray. Pastor, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Bible says God will lift up a standard and the spirit of God that is within me will pray. I know how to pray. That's me fighting. I said, God, you can't take mommy. Oh, she's my rock. She's my prayer warrior. Twice she had a stroke once. They rushed her to the hospital. They sent her home. Hey, look at the goodness of God. They sent her home back. Somebody with Joseph's stroke. And on her way home, by the time she get in the house, bam again. I said, God, you got to come through for me. I can tell you that my mom is walking. She's talking. She's skipping. She's still working for God. And she said, I pray for you every day. Every day without fail. Who could it be? I believe God. And so I'm going to fight. Thank you for joining us and thank you for listening to this timely and powerful message. You have heard the word, and now we would like to extend this opportunity to you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you wish to do this, please just say this short prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. And I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Please forgive me of all of my sins and cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. Save me and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I thank you for answering my prayer and I thank you for saving me. Amen. And if you have said that prayer, congratulations and welcome into the family of Christ. If you would like to contact us or even visit us, the information that you need will be on your screen in a few seconds. Until next time, goodbye. God richly bless you.